Okay, so here's our problem. We have, uh, we're given this diagram, right? And it looks like this. And it's telling us we have these three charges. And I want to know what the net force is on this minus 7 nanocoulomb charge, right? So I have this grid that I can get the, the distances between the charges from. There's a minus 4 nanocoulomb charge up here, 3 meters away. And there's a 9 nanocoulomb charge over here, 7 meters away on the x-axis. So this one's on the y, this one's on the x. So this is pretty straightforward. We don't have to do any vector breakdowns, right? Because this one's going to be on the x-axis and this one's going to be on the y-axis. Okay, so let's draw our forces first just to keep everything straight. So this 9 nanocoulomb charge is going to attract the 7 nanocoulomb charge. And so I'll just call this F1. And then this negative charge up here on the y-axis is going to repel so I'm going to call this one F2. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how big these two forces are. Okay, and that's pretty straightforward. Just use Coulomb's law. So for F1, I'm going to use Coulomb's law. So I'm just going to plug in the values that I know. K, and then Q1, I'll use this. And Q2, I'll use this charge. Okay, so if I take this and I solve, I get... F1 is equal to 1.16 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. Okay, so that's this one. Okay, so let's do the same thing for F2. So I'm going to use same Coulomb's law, right? Except now I'm using these two charges because I'm trying to find this force. So when I get... F2, I get 2.8 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons, right? So here I plugged everything in, and I used 3, because that's the distance there. And notice I didn't use the negative signs, but it wouldn't have mattered, right? But like up here, you don't want to use the negative sign here, because you'll end up with a negative number. And we just, Coulomb's law is just about the magnitude of the force, right? You're not actually getting the direction. The direction comes from, is it positive or negative? Okay, so now let's go draw our vectors and find the net force. Okay, so I'm going to redraw these, like right here. So, this is F1, and F1 is 1.16 times 10 to the minus 8. So, I'll draw it on there. And then F2 points down, and F2 is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons, so it's going to be a little bit bigger. So, this is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. So, that means my resultant must point this way. So let's go ahead and figure out how much that is, right? Well, if I know the two sides, right, Pythagorean theorem. So if I add the squares of my two sides and take the square root of that whole thing, I end up with that equals 3.0225. Newtons, right? Or if I want to put this in like a decent unit, I could convert to nanonewtons. So because nano is 10 to the minus 9, I'm going to move this over 1. So this becomes this negative 8 becomes a negative 9. So that would be 30.29 nanonewtons, right? That's how much this net force is. Okay. So let's say you wanted to know the angle, right? So there's two ways you could define this angle. So one, I could just, you know, I want to know my angle right here. If I know this angle, then figuring out the other ones is easy, right? Well, this one's 90. And this one, you could just subtract from 180 to get what this one is, right? So let's solve for this one, right? If I want just that angle, um, I know all three of the sides now, so it's easy. So I'll, I'll just use tangent, right? So I know... Tangent theta equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So, if I take the arctangent of the opposite over the adjacent side, that's going to give you the angle. And so, if I take the arctangent of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 8 over 1.16 times 10 to the minus 8, I get 67.50 degrees. 
So this angle is 67.50 degrees. But you could also, let's say you wanted to define this in, term of, in terms of zero being the positive x-axis, right? Because sometimes you'll be asked to define that. So where, let's say, like if I'm pointing 45 degrees this way, it's not really 45 degrees this way. It's 90 plus that. So 90, 135 degrees, right? Instead of defining it from this axis, you're calling it relative to that. So if you wanted to figure that out, all you'd have to do is take 360, right? Because my vector points down here. You would just take 360, which would get you back to the origin. And I could subtract that 67.5 degrees. And if I did that, I would be left with... Right, and it depends on which, which quadrant you're in, right? So if you were doing this, let's say, from the other quadrant, you would use 270, right? But here, mine went to 360. It's in quadrant 4, so if I subtract the 2, the angle would be 292.5 degrees, right? So that's relative to 360 being all the way back around, okay? So either way, you get the same answer. It just depends on how you're defining your angle.